Hello and welcome to East Dropping at the Movies. I'm Mike. And I'm Jose. And today we're talking about X, a slasher film, old school horror, uh, written and directed by Ty West, who I, I hadn't heard of. I haven't heard of. And he's made other films that neither of us have seen. Yes. Um, I didn't know very much about this. I knew it was 18 rated, and that's always a cause for excitement because so much stuff is doled down for 15 or 12 eight to make money and whatnot. Kind of excited to see proper 18 rated stuff. Um, I knew it was sex related. Um, it's about these young adults, teens, six of them. Uh, they want to make a porn film. They rent, this is in 1979 in Texas. They rent a place on a homestead, farmstead, owned by this very, very old couple. Very, very old, like Crypt Keeper old, um, with the white hair that's creepy and ugh, all of that sort of stuff. Um, it really builds on tropes like that. Um, to make this porn movie. They haven't told them that's what they're going to do and all this, but that's what they're doing. Um, and then people start getting picked off in, in very, very gruesome ways. And one of the most exciting things about this film was your reactions to it. I hated every moment of it. You were jumpy, you were screaming. I mean, I've never seen a film... I know you hated it. I've never seen a film get this kind of reaction from you, though. Well, I, as you know, I don't like horror. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why I don't like horror is because I don't like seeing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I feel I have to see it for professional reasons, and I do. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'm very pleasantly surprised. I mean, sometimes I end up, you know, liking stuff uh, very much, mm. uh, like Get Out and things like that. But but I hated this on many, many levels. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, like it very much either. But not for the same, well, maybe for some of the same reasons. But not for that reason in particular. I mean, what I liked was getting to sit next to you while you jumped, you know. And I didn't find it um, horrific in a way that was unpleasant to me or offensive or anything like that. Like, I kind of, I, I mean, it just kind of washed over me, that stuff. The gore and the... And the... Well, I, 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 I really didn't like it. Yeah. Um, I just didn't think much of it. See, the thing is, I, I wouldn't normally be particularly interested in a slasher. Um, except that I had seen people talking about this. Mm. And from the setting, um, I vaguely, I guess, got the impression that it had some it had some interest in filmmaking and some self-referentiality and, and that kind of thing. So that was kind of what was interesting to me in principle. Yes. I actually, I don't think it's that sophisticated. No, but it's what I like best about this film. Sure. You know, uh, the talking about porn in the coming context of VHS mm -hmm. you know and how this guy who wants to make like porn but art and you know where you position the camera can create a, a different image all of that stuff was neat I like that and I like the period feel mm. and I loved the, the the music you know yeah it's the, a film that you feel it's a film that you feel has not had that much money spent on it apart from the soundtrack yeah which the amount of money that's gone into clearance for Don't Fear the Reaper Landslide um, what were we, what we singing on the way home? Um, I forget. But... Bad Case of Loving You, Robert Palmer. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of classic songs yeah. uh, from the period. Um, but but I kind of I, f I find it almost like an immoral film, mm -hmm. you know, because it's meant to creep you out and disgust you by age. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of age is what's meant to be horrible, frightful disgusting right uh and so on thus you know kind of spurring on mm -hmm. the murders until you get to the final girl i mean it's a classic final girl film mm -hmm. yeah and i suppose the only thing that it does new with it is you know that it's a porn star that survives <laughs> i don't think that's the only thing that it does that's new or kind of slightly novel the the villains, as it turns out, well, I suppose as it turns out, I mean, I guess you should be suspecting it, is this old couple. Um, and the woman in particular is, I, I think at some points you kind of feel sorry for her because she's jealous of the beauty and youth I know of these people. I never felt sorry for her. Okay, well, you, you, you might do, though. Um, you, you can certainly see what I'm getting at, right? That, like, I do, I do. She's I jealous do. Of, of the beauty and youth of these people. And she's jealous of how freely they are. She's spying on them while they're shooting these porn scenes. Um, and she's clearly very jealous, and the husband is very aware of this. He can't have sex with his wife. His heart is very weak, and that's why he can't, um, even though he really would like to. Um, so she is... She, she's a morass of this unfulfilled sexual desire. She's still very, very sexually 
um, she wishes she was sexually active. She, you know, in her head, she's got a libido and all this, mm. right? And the loss of beauty uh, has driven her to murder. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and that jealousy and so on. And the thing that I think is kind of novel about it is um, in slashes, it's such a classic thing to have the sexually active kids being punished for their sexual activity yes. through murder. As indeed, they, they all die here, right? So I'm not well, saying... Well, except that the porn star is the one who survives. Except the porn star is the one who survives, so you're right. And also the first one who dies is, in fact, the prude. Mm. Um, I mean, we're, we're led to believe that another character is going to be a prude. But mm. Anyway, um, but the, very, the, the clearly uh, prudish one, who's the filmmaker guy, um, is the first one who goes. Um, so that is kind of... That's interesting. It is trying to, it is trying to invert that trope. Um, not, I mean, only, I, I, I think only in terms of what I said, because, you know, it's still only the final girl who survives, right? That's it. But, you know, the final girl who survives is, it turns out, spoilers, the daughter of a televangelist, mm -hmm. yeah, who keeps repeating, don't accept your... I won't accept a life that I don't deserve, something, something like, that. like that. It's something quite millennial. And yeah. So <laughs> she rejects the Christianity for porn, and she ends up surviving, which actually I do think in a classic mm. slasher film is the tables turning. Yeah. But that's, that's it. They all do get picked off one by one. And actually I was very disturbed by some of the elements, right? So, you know, uh, age and aging and loss of beauty and libido and sex drive and so on, those are all themes in the film. But as I said, using old age to creep you out is, I think, terrible. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of immoral, really, I think. Uh, uh, it's easy, and it's also kind of wrong. We're all going to get old. We're all going to have saggy skin. You know, there are lots of filmmakers who, make, who turn that into something beautiful. So fair enough, you know, that... Yeah, you. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting idea to have a woman's loss of sexual desirability as a spark to murder. Certainly, hmm. you know, much more original than if it were a man. But it wouldn't be the first film that's done that. I mean, aging... but it doesn't matter if it's if it's if it's not the first film to do that. I think it's kind of immoral to do that. Hmm. Uh, you know, so I didn't I didn't like that. I also thought. To make the black guy with the big dick a penis, and then to make the big dick into a joke, is kind of feeding into all of these stereotypes that are actually kind of, you know, ring alarm bells, really. Mm. You know, uh, there's also the gender thing, uh, and on several levels, right? So, for example, you know, they could also have cast the producer as the porn star. You know, that was yeah, quite normal to do that, mm -hmm. right? Like, these are small, low-budget films. Everybody pitches in, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in everything. But no, it's only the black guy who's actually kind of active. And it's only the women who you see their, the bodies of, right? So kind of, you know, the women are undressed. Yeah, the camera remains coy about the men, except when, you know, it's clearly prosthetics when uh, you find out that actually this old couple has been doing this quite regularly because there's an old Volkswagen in the pond and there's a man who's been tied up, chained and mm. tortured and killed and obviously sexually played with in the cellar. Yeah, yeah. if not regularly, once before. I don't know that we, we have a pattern of repeated things, well, but certainly once before. The implication happened. is that it's happened. And that is, you know, the bit of male nudity that you see, mm. yeah, when you see this corpse, uh, this male corpse in the cellar. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was all like, Ugh. yeah, it is pretty grim, and I don't really wish to defend it too much, and I don't think it's very clever, and that's that's really my main objection to it is I think it thinks it's being a little bit clever and cuter with all the film references and things like that than it is. I don't think it is. It loves its period, and I think it loves the films it's building on. It also, it's not just slashes. I mean, well, you could call Psycho the first slasher, I guess. Some people do. Psycho is a film it references reasonably heavily as well. It's one yes. of the more, it's one of the heavier references. Porn is also, 70s porn is also a reference. Yeah, absolutely. Debbie Does Dallas yeah. is, is a reference um, that's explicit. So it, it loves its period and it loves the history that's building on it. It starts off with looking out from the inside of the place where the, the kids are staying, the, the little sort of outhouse, whatever, on the farmstead. Um, it looks out from it and inside it's dark, so it's framed 
by these two black borders. So you, the, the, although the whole film is made in widescreen, the initial shot is a full frame shot. And then that full frame imagery keeps on coming back because we see things on TV. We see the footage of the camera as they're filming the pornos. Mm. Again, it's and actually the, the very end, the final credits are in 16 millimeter. Are in 60 millimeter, four to three, you know. So it, it, it has a kind of bit of a fetish for that kind of stuff. It uses these wipes that are. Um, very kind of artificial and again speak to kind of cheapness and old filmmaking yeah I didn't like that either no yeah I didn't like all the split screen stuff yeah that tries to mix one world with the other you know it tries to connect them both yeah kind of very artificially because actually what's happening in one part of the frame is often not really related to what's happening with the other no so I thought that was cheap it's very film schooly in that yeah way. And, and, and unappealingly so and I hated the other thing as well mm -hmm. you know which which kind of elongates time so, you know, you see something, yeah, and then you see it again later on, and then you're, you know, you cut back to the earlier moments, yeah? Um, yeah, it does have cutting, rather than cutting straight from one scene to another, it'll very often do two or three cuts from one to the other to back to, and back again, back and forth, back and forth, two or three times, as if the scenes are kind of bleeding into each other. But you can't, what's the purpose? I didn't see any purpose. I didn't see any purpose. The other, the other bit of editing that's me. a little like that is the cross-cutting between a couple of scenes where, so the, the girl, the porn star who ends up making it, um, goes into the house at the start because she sees this little old woman and she's like, what's going on? And she's right at the start of the film. And um, she is given lemonade by this woman and it's all kind of creepy and a big Texas chain story. At the same time, in the sort of cabin, they're filming um, the kind of intro scene to the porn film where the girl set, you know, invites the guy in, do you want some lemonade? So they're doing the same scene, effectively. They have, it's one person giving lemonade to another person who's come into their home. And the film cross-cuts between them, kind of ironically, right? Because in the one scene, the girl is coming on to the guy and they're going to fuck. Mm. And in this other scene, it's really creepy and weird. What's this woman up mm. to? And it gets kind of a joke or two out of it, or at least a, a sort of slightly funny situational bit of cross-cutting. Mm. But it's not more richly purposeful than that, and I don't think it's worth it. It's it's more confusing than it's well, not it's confusing. The right word. It just doesn't seem. It doesn't planned thought through. It doesn't convey anything. It right. doesn't add anything. You know, it just feels like a trick. You know, uh, uh, not even a trick. Like uh, you know, the filmmaker saying, "Oh, let's be imaginative" or something, but actually, it's not, and it certainly doesn't convey anything. Mm. You know, and all that it ends up doing is puzzling you. It's like, why the hell is it doing this, right? Mm. Uh, and where's so, it going? Yeah, yeah, and the answer is nowhere. It doesn't do anything. With exactly. It. So, so what about the couple of moments of? Um, it's interesting, actually. One of the the, the the filmmaker character who's interested in the avant garde and mm. the French New Wave and all this kind of stuff, and we and we don't. He says we don't have to have a narrative. Narrative is too overrated because what we have to do is just give the audience what they want. That's what they're here for, really, right? So we but, so we don't have to convince. We can just get into the sex or whatever. He's, he says something like that at mm. one point. And there are a couple of moments that make me think of that in the context of the whole film, which is after the first murder, for instance, uh, the old lady having killed that filmmaker character. The music's still playing in the truck. He was trying to escape. It's, it's don't uh, don't fear the reaper, and she has a little dance to herself. Mm. Another one would be when they play landslide in the mm. cabin. It's it, it's not purposeful and it's a little bit beautiful and it, it, it makes. I think the film is is kind of building on that idea that that the narrative isn't quite so important. We can have these. These these extra bits, these different bits. But this is all plot. This film. I mean, so if you know, if it's trying to do that, it's definitely not trying to. Do that. I mean, <laughs> you know. Well, it also has yeah. a plot that fully makes sense and is yeah. fleshed out. And it, yeah, and it completely coheres. Yeah. So um, so I don't know. I mean, you know, what I learned is that uh, um, the uh, lead porn actress, the blonde. And Pearl are played by the same actress. Oh, right? are they? Maybe yeah, that. and again, I thought, you know, that could have been interesting, right? Because, you know, uh, if you'd put the focus on the blonde, yeah, and have her play Pearl, then you could relate those two characters in a very intriguing way, right? Except that the emphasis is really on the younger brunette porn actress, right? No, no, that yeah, that's the one who plays Pearl. Oh, is it? Yeah, you know, the blonde, the one, the main porn actress is not, she's, that's Jenna Ortega, she plays her own, that's just her own. Oh, right, okay, got it, got it. Okay, well then that, that does make it, that, that does yeah. add a layer of interest, right? Because yeah. in a way, 
Yeah, the kind of the, the, you know, when the old lady says, you will be me, mm. then actually you think, well, you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I didn't know that, though. Uh, and, but I did I did think that the film is drawing some t- a, a, a line parallel between these two. And yes. I actually wondered whether it would get time travel about it, like, I'm actually you from the past or something like that. It doesn't do that. No, it um, doesn't have the imagination to do much with it, actually. That's the problem. Well, I'm not saying that my solution would have been imaginative. I'm just saying I, th- I wondered whether that was going to happen. <laughs> uh, but you were pointing out there is that they were filming in secret a prequel to this called Pearl, which is about the old lady character. Yes. So we're going to apparently find out about her past and so on and so forth. It's interesting to make two films back to back, one of them in secret, mm. until you know, um, until such time as <laughs> there were things that I did like very much about the film. So, for example, you know, at the beginning when there is a at a strip club, right. You know, they open the door in the back and really the, the building mm. is a billboard and you have the fields of wherever it is, but it's supposed to be Kansas, right? It's Texas. Texas, and yeah. you have this huge open space. I thought that was like, uh, you, you know, kind of visually there are kind of intriguing, mm. intriguing ways that it's filmed, you know, that it kind of like creates angles, right, that are at once evocative of a space that's old and that's been lived in and that is, mm-hmm. you know, has decrepitude. And also kind of very interesting kind of as a setting for the action that is always kind of skewed or something. So Mm -hmm. um, I liked, you know, I liked some of the compositions. Uh, I liked the period feel. Yeah, I I think they managed to get that right in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of Mm -hmm. from the makeup and the hair. Mm -hmm. and You know, so all of that uh, uh, I quite liked. Um, But I hated the experience of sitting through it. Yeah, well, I loved it because you were sat next to me. But had you not been sat next to me, I wouldn't have given two shits about <laughs> it. So what I would say is I recommend this only if you can go see it with Jose. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> give it a miss. I'm not, I'm not, I don't think it's that interesting, really. <laughs> yes, I screeched throughout. Yeah. Oh, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it at all, really. No. Nah. Uh, so, and I think it's overpraised as it is. Yeah, well, exactly. Uh, it's it, that's, that's, that's the problem, is people just lap this kind of low-effort shit up. Mm. Like, oh, they talked about films I like. Yes. <laughs> That'll be better than that. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. We are eavesdropping at the movies and we are on Apple Podcasts, Audible, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. On social media, we're on Facebook and Twitter, and the website is eavesdroppingatthemovies.com. Thank you very much for listening. Bye bye. <laughs>